Владимир Владимирович Путин. Securing the top job in Russia is a formidable task, but for Vladimir Putin, gaining the keys to the Kremlin was done with remarkable ease. As he confidently strode the red carpet at his inauguration as president, the applause highlighted a nation's relief. Here was a man tough enough to guide Russia back to recapture its former glory. However, few were cheering louder than Russia's secret services. Putin was their man, a former KGB agent and director of Russia's Federal Security Bureau, known as the FSB. Russia's new president had already proven that he had the ruthless resolve to crush any dissenters on the way to the top. I want to to prove that Putin is dangerous not because he's cr simple crime, because he is because he is a real crime. This man is perhaps President Putin's greatest enemy, the man he fears most. Not surprising when you consider that billionaire and media baron Boris Berezovsky is mounting an extraordinary attack on Putin's presidency. Throughout much of the 90s, Berezovsky was one of the most influential political players in the country. He helped deliver the presidency to Putin, but quickly became disillusioned by Putin's methods of consolidating power. This way is the way back, back to totalitarian, uh, totalitarian political system. And I, I, I knew that, I felt that. I, uh, I, I, I knew a little bit history and uh, I tried to protect himself and, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, a society from that, uh, that, uh, that uh, uh, really wrong steps. And he did not uh, like what I, what I, uh, that I present this position openly and our relations become uh, become worse. Putin turned on Berezovsky and hounded him out of Russia. Now from exile and forced to communicate with Russia via video link, Berezovsky is fighting back. He accuses Russia's FSB of an astounding campaign of terror which allowed Vladimir Putin to gain and maintain the presidency. According to Berezovsky, the tactics include murdering politicians, running organized crime gangs, and even mass murder. He believes the Kremlin is covering up these crimes. It's at least clear that officials are liars. They don't want to say true. It's already clear now as a result of investigations. And now I want just to give answer why they are liars, what they try to hide. The main allegation against the FSB relates to a series of bomb attacks in Russia that occurred just after Putin became Prime Minister and were instrumental in Putin becoming President. Over a two-week period in September 1999, four huge terrorist bombs struck at the heart of Russia's cities. Killing almost 300 people, The explosions were targeted at residential buildings, timed to kill as many sleeping occupants as possible. A climate of fear gripped the country. Officially, the government blamed Chechen rebels. None were ever arrested. 
But then came the incident that started turning the finger of suspicion directly towards the Russian security service. The city of Ryazan lies four hours' drive southeast of Moscow. Like all Russians, the residents here were vigilant to the threat of further attacks. On the evening of September 22nd, a bus driver called Alexei Katofilnikov noticed a suspicious car parked outside his apartment complex. He was drawn to the car because part of its number plates had been covered over with a hand-drawn piece of paper, indicating that it was a local car. After observing two men and one woman carrying sacks from the car down into the basement of the building, he called police. By the time they arrived, the car was gone. One of the building's residents reported what happened next. The cops were running all over the building, banging on doors and shouting, everybody out, there's a bomb in the building. After what had happened in Moscow and other places, everyone went down into the street in their dressing gowns and slippers. Residents gathered together here to tell their story on a Russian TV program recorded a few months after the incident. This program formed the basis of a documentary financed by Berezovsky called Assassination of Russia, which tore great holes in the government's version of who was behind the 1999 bombing spree. It suggested that the FSB itself had carried out the bombings and its biggest lie had been over the bomb planted in Ryazan. I noted down a quarter past midnight. We were taken to the October cinema. There was no heating. It was freezing for the children. Well, I was there with you. We were all there in the October cinema. There's no point in lying. On the night of the bomb attempt, the head of the local FSB told the residents they'd been saved from certain death. He got us all together in a circle around him and said, today is your second birthday. There were three bags of explosive programmed to go off at half past five. You would have all been there and you would all have been blown sky high. The following day, relying on identikit pictures from the witness in the building, more than a thousand police and security personnel were thrown into the hunt for the bombers. That same day, a telephonist at the Ryazan exchange overheard a conversation between what she took to be one of the bombers and FSB headquarters in Moscow. They said, is the woman with you? No, she's taking the trolley bus at noon. Where's the car? The car's in the car park. Leave Ryazan separately. There are checkpoints and patrols everywhere. And I mean, anyone would have thought, because everyone was thinking about terrorism. By day two, with the fresh lead from the telephonist, police were moving in to arrest their suspects. But when Moscow was notified of the imminent arrest, Stunned local officers were told not to proceed. Incredibly, the suspects they were about to arrest were in fact FSB officers. It was at this point that the government completely changed their story. Just 30 minutes after the interior minister had publicly confirmed the bomb attempt. Positive measures are already being taken. One example is the prevention of an explosion in an apartment building in Ryazan. The head of the FSB then denied it completely. First of all, there wasn't an explosion. And that explosion wasn't prevented. But it wasn't good work.